One day I was at Borders Bookstore, the librarian that I am. <laughs> I think I've read two books in my life. But there is a book that I saw that captured my attention. I bought it. And I had it hanging around for quite some time. And one day I was taking some travel with the company. And I thought, oh, I'll bring this book. I'll be one of those sophisticated types on the airplane and I'll read this book. And it's interesting because after reading this book, it impressed me so much about the importance of drinking water. And during the pages of this book, I kept having the flight attendant bring me more water, more water, and made more trips to the bathroom, too. And the distributor I was visiting, I was like, you know, you need to drink more water. And it's interesting, and I came back to the office here, and for those of you that know me, I've been affectionately known as the water guy. Drink more water. you got to drink water. You have to drink water. Mr. Capadon would come into his office and it'd be like with a red glass. What is this? This is water. Drink water. You're not drinking enough water. Now you see all the executives going out to use the bathroom because they're all drinking water now. And the more I kept reading this book, the more I said, I got to know who this author is. I'm curious to meet this individual. And I just want to read you some credentials so I don't leave anything out. He's a graduate of St. Mary's Medical School of London. He's the author of several books, among them, one of them, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. When I flipped through the pages of the book and I saw all the people that were in the medical field that had some kind of support to this author, it made me realize that if the medical industry is going to support someone that's not pushing more drugs in our bodies, then this is a special writing that is in this book. Water. A very healthy thing for the body. He put out an audio tape series. For those of you that ride in my car, you know that that tape's sitting right there. And I listen to it. A lot of information. He also has an audio, as well as a video series, Water Rx for a Healthier Pain-Free Life. I will tell you that I used to have pains in my body. And I know it wasn't old age because I'm not old. But I had pains. I don't have the same kind of pains anymore. And I understand why. He spent 16 years researching the reasons why we develop painful diseases and how water can cure major body pains. He's sponsored or supported, I should say, by the AMA, American Medical Association. That's impressive. And respected by those in the medical professions, even though his methods are controversial to the standards of the medical theory. His association with Carico indicates how highly he thinks of us. And what is interesting is that we're fortunate enough to have a man that loves helping people through something as simple as water be one of our guest speakers. I'm proud to introduce the author of Your Body Cries for Many Waters, Dr. Batman Gellish. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here with you and share with you information that will make every one of you a messenger of health and well-being to the people that you visit, the people that you come across, the people whose lives you will touch <clears throat> because you will teach them that they are not sick, they are thirsty. The greatest tragedy in medical history is the false assumption that dry mouth is a sign of dehydration of the body, the only sign of dehydration. This misconception entered into uh, scientific research at the beginning of the century or towards the end of last century, and it's held on because it's advantageous to the pharmaceutical industry. 
The body, in order to be able to chew and swallow food, which is a primary function for our physiology, produces ample saliva, even though the rest of the body may be dehydrated. So this misconception that dry mouth is a sign of dehydration of body has caused really unmeasurable tragedy in our society, has killed millions, hundreds of millions of people from ignorance. That's the foundation to our modern day medicine. At the end of 20th century, we don't know when the human body is thirsty because we've stuck to the idea that dry mouth is the only sign of dehydration. It was my fortunate uh, luck and the happenstance that I discovered water has curative properties. Water relieves pain. The most severe pain that you can imagine, water can relieve when medication would not be able to do that. And uh, this is on top of many years of uh, medical practice when I discovered this about 18, 19 years ago, and I stuck to this information and researched it to the point that now, today, I'm an internationally recognized authority in my field, and I have produced a total shift of attention in basic instructions of medicine and have introduced the concept that it's water that regulates all functions of the body, not the solid matter that's in our body. Today, doctors give you this pill, that pill, thinking that they will find some sort of a solid composition that will turn the tide of events in the body and relieve pain and cure pain. Because up to now, we cannot, we could not in the past cure any disease. We could only treat them. If you go and study a, a book in medicine, <coughs> you will see that uh, page upon page, hundreds of pages are written about any one topic explaining the situation in the body when that disease is in the body. And when it comes to the explanation of what causes the disease, they all say etiology unknown. In other words, we don't know the cause. Today, we now understand that dehydration that settles in the body expands gradually, produces so many different symptoms and signs. And because of water, lack of water, will also produce physiological upheaval in the body. The conditions that are produced by dehydration have been labeled as disease conditions. So, so many health problems of our society are produced just by dehydration. We can cure many, many diseases many different pains by adjusting the water intake of the body. Some, in 1979, as a result of my previous research and publication, I was invited to present at the third Interscience World Conference on Inflammation, a, a thesis that I have produced, and that histamine, all of you have heard of histamine. Have you heard of histamine? Raise your hands. You've used antihistamines, raise your hands. Okay, histamine is the main neurotransmitter in the body that is in charge of water regulation and drought management. Water is the only thing that turns off histamine production. So any disease condition that depends on histamine or antihistamine, water can cure. Almost 90% of the medications in the pharmaceutical industry's arsenal of products are either directly or indirectly very strong antihistamines. So when you find painkillers, they're antihistamines. When you find anti-allergy conditions, they're antihistamines. And this is the presentation I made at the World Conference saying that histamine, the main function of histamine in the body is water regulation. And we should not treat conditions of 
histamine excess activity with medications or pharmaceutical products. We should only treat them with water. Because when you suppress the signals of dehydration in a body, you don't alter the dehydration, the damage of dehydration will continue. And that's why so many different disease conditions occur throughout the lives of people who are not drinking water, but drinking alternative fluids which don't substitute water in the body. Caffeinated beverages, alcoholic beverages, sodas containing uh, artificial sweeteners, excess fruit juices, they do not substitute water. We need water for the body, and that is what the design of the human body is all about. From water, dependent on water, survives on water, and you cannot replace water with anything. You may hush its cries for water, but you will not alter the course of the disease that is produced by dehydration. <clears throat> The reason why I'm here this morning, the reason why I accepted to come and talk before you, because you are the people who go and make contact with others. You come across people. You can become educators. You can teach people that they're not sick, they're thirsty. And my main concern in this crusade is asthma. Asthma in children. Newsweek has got an article. I recommend you to get this Newsweek and read it. It is uh, May 26, 1997. Life magazine has got an article in the same week about asthma. And the title goes, 50 million Americans with allergies or asthma, now you can take control of your life. Yes, they're right. They can take control of their life, but with water, not with the medication that the articles have been produced because the pharmaceutical industry has advertised 16 or 18 pages of full-page advertising in the, in the magazine. When a child develops asthma, it means dehydration. The human body is composed of water. 85% uh, of the brain is water. Every cell of the brain is 85% water. The rest of the soft tissue cells are 75% water. When you don't drink enough water, the body does not manufacture water from any other source. When you uh, metabolize food, some water is produced, but not to the extent that the body needs. So a child that's developing and it's expanding, every cell of its body requires 75% water before it develops into a, a new cell and the child could grow, will get stunted growth, will get mental problems, will get emotional problems, will get DNA damage, and so many different disease conditions <clears throat> produced by dehydration can ensue. So, please take this message to people that you meet and explain to them. You can always explain to people very simply. The lung tissue is full of berries. The berries of the lung contain air. <coughs> Excuse me. Imagine this grape, bunch of grapes to be a, a section of the lung tissue. Each berry is full of air. If, if water doesn't get into the lung tissue, it becomes raisins. You see, the body cannot afford that. So it shuts down the lung tissue, the passageways, so that air that comes out doesn't bring water out with it because every time you breathe when you breathe out you bring a lot of water out of the body asthma is a state of dehydration that the body has installed or is executing drought management program the lung evaporates if you give a person with asthma 
water. Very simply, water. Give them two glasses of water, three glasses of water, depending on their size and age. They will not get asthma. If they're in the middle of an attack, you can give them water and a little bit of salt, because another substance which is highly antihistaminic is salt. Because in the human body, there are two pools of water or two oceans of water. There is the ocean of water that's inside the cells of the body, and then there is the ocean of water that's outside of the cells of the body. When the body becomes dehydrated, the ocean outside is maintained. In other words, water is borrowed from the cells, and it's the, the ocean outside expands, and from there, water is injected into the cells of, that are important, such as the brain cell, the liver cell, and so on. When you have asthma, this is a crystalline salt, crystalline salt, sea salt. All you need to do is to give a person with asthma two glasses of water and put two of these grains of salt on their tongue. And that acts all, almost like an inhaler. It aborts an asthma attack. Take this information to the people you meet. I suggest that you read this book, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. I think you can get it from Caraco and thoroughly become knowledgeable about dehydration in the human body and what are the symptoms of, de of dehydration. And then subsequently take this message to the people you meet and you become the angel of health, good health and you will be able to share the information that's new in medicine and medical profession in the commercial system is not going to take this information to the public. It's up to people like you and I to take it to the public. Thank you very much. Yeah.